we just got in this betroidal hematite. So uh, I know this is material that you can't find ever. Like I've came across this twice in my life. So you put this piece aside, and then this is all the really, really good stuff right here that I'll, I'll hold, I'm gonna hold on to all of this. So this will get boxed up, packed up, and put away in our private reserve. And you know, you have these minerals when the, when the day comes, and you know, this is super high-end stuff, and very, very rare. As we're going through material and, and, and coming across material, we start putting away a lot of the higher end material. You know, you can see like this is a really nice, this is all really, really nice stuff. Opalized ammonites. And a big lesson that I learned many, many years ago was before Campo de Cielos became impossible to get, which is the, you know, an iron meteorite, a dealer had offered me to buy like around 2,000 kilos of Campo de Cielo meteorites. And at the time he wanted me to pay $200 a kilo, which is 20 cents a gram. Like dirt, dirt cheap. I didn't really know much about meteorites at that time. I kind of just started getting into the business and so I didn't buy the meteorites. To this day, it's one of my biggest regrets that I ever had because now Campo de Cielo sell for $3,000 a kilo. So seven, eight years ago, I would have bought those meteorites for $200 a kilo wholesale. Now the wholesale price is $3,000 a kilo. So you kind of learn from these things as you go. And again, foresight is, is something that you can't have until you wind up in a situation where you learn from the mistake. Since there's a pandemic, I'm not able to travel internationally. Usually I go to the mines myself and buy the mines. And this way I kind of know exactly what I'm getting and I'm not surprised, but I haven't been able to do that. So I've been relying on the miners to send me the material and uh, just to let people kind of see, this is when you buy out the pyrite mines, this is how it gets shipped, it's like this. You know, there's no individual wrapping of pieces and it's kind of the hard thing about being a wholesaler is you, you wind up with material that's damaged and you can't sell it to your client. So you want to wind up having to give it away for free or discount it or whatever it may be. I sell it to other wholesalers really, really cheap. And you know, again, like I said, when you're dealing with mining companies, this is what you wind up with is literally just rocks thrown in a box and the box can't handle the rocks and it explodes. And this is pretty standard actually. So yesterday was probably the busiest day I've ever had in the warehouse up to date. Uh, what happened was is we were all on vacation for holidays and Gila booked us solid yesterday and I also booked us solid yesterday so we were double booked and it was absolutely insane. It was the craziest day ever. Black tourmaline mines in South America are pretty much done, closed. Nobody really knows this yet. Whoever watches this video will not know this. A lot of my clients know this. So now, you know, what I got here, this is black tourmaline. Again, this is all mine run stuff coming right out of the mine. So we gotta clean all of this stuff and it's all gonna be very valuable. Although black tourmaline usually was pretty cheap. Uh, and like, this is how it comes out of the mine. They don't wrap it, they just throw it in an in a old stinky barrel and then you kinda gotta clean it. Recently I bought out the cherry amber mines. I call it cherry amber. They call it black amber. It's from Indonesia. But you can see it has a very ch cherry color. Really hard stuff to get. Not cheap. But this is how it comes. Ooh -wee. <laughs> this is how it comes from the mine. You can see it's like filthy, filthy. So we have to clean it uh, before we can sell it. And also I can't tell the quality of the stuff until we clean it. So let's get it clean. What we're going to do now is, now that we've cleaned it, we're going to dump it into here because it has grates, and then all the dirt will just go right through the grates. See the little bug? Jurassic Park bug. And the really cool thing about this is how you know it's actually amber not just what you call copal. So you got a, a UV light. You see how it turns it blue? So UV light will turn this like a bluish color.
so we're here today to show you how to clean some of your crystals. This can be applied to pretty much any crystal you have. Uh, I got two very dirty crystals here. We've got an amethyst that has a lot of dust on it and a rainbow aura amethyst that has a lot of dust on it as well. And you can do this with anything, clusters, whatever rock you have. Typically we have a very large 10 gallon air compressor, but you could get even a small one. Uh, or even sometimes what'll work is those uh, computer air spray bottles. Uh, and what we want to do is we just want to remove the, the top layer of dust first. So you can see that, and then see how dirty this is. And we're going to remove the dust from this. You see how that automatically brings us a much higher luster to these crystals, just by spraying them down. And now we're going to take them and wash them. And we just got a little bit of water here with just a tiny bit of hand soap, a very tiny bit. And we're just gonna get in the cracks and the crevices to make it nice and shiny. Okay, that's going down. Don't do the same thing to this guy here. Again, using a brush like this is good because you get in between the, the points which is really where the dust tends to settle. So you, you spray off the top layer, and then you get in between the grooves. And it's that simple. Do we have any material that is like, that we get only, that no one else can get? There, there really is no material that like, is impossible to get, because someone's gonna have to buy it eventually. Right, okay. But I would definitely say that I get first dibs on a lot of different things. But like but, that, that hematite, that, that betrayal hematite, I yeah, got first pretty... dibs on that. So in 2019, we decided to open up a West Coast location in Tucson, Arizona, mostly because we have so many clients who do gem shows out there and halfway through the gem show, we're getting calls from clients saying, hey, I'm out of material, can you send me material? But by the time we would get them the material, their show would be over and it would be frivolous to send them anything. And so we decided to open up a warehouse location out there. We also have a ton of West Coast clients who want to come in and do their in-house shopping where pretty much if you're a West Coast client, your major option is to do a video call. So it's nice for them to be able to come in and pick their own stuff. And so again, like I said, we opened this Tucson location and it went really, really, really well. Uh, all of our clients who were doing the gem shows were able to come in, get their stuff. We also sell to a lot of other wholesalers. So it worked really well. Anyway, here we are now in 2021, and the gem shows have all been canceled in Tucson this year because of coronavirus. And we're still going out there because we have our warehouse and our clients need their stuff. And so because we are dedicated to our clients, we've decided that we'll be out there for a couple of weeks. And we're already booked pretty much. I think we have like maybe one or two appointments open uh, for the three weeks that we'll be out there. But we're going to head out there and service our West Coast clients, and hopefully everything goes smoothly. Uh, we're taking all the precautions that we could possibly think of. But it's uh, definitely a risk, and I think that uh, just me, Danny, and Rodney are going to go this year. Where usually we would take more people, but we're going to kind of try to keep it simple and, and quick, and get in and out of there, and hopefully it's nice and clean. What I do once in a while, especially if it's for a client that I'm very close with or someone that I'm very familiar with, is they'll ask me for a special request. So I have a client who's trying to make a moldavite pendant and a tanzanite pendant. So I'm going to take this little piece of rough moldavite, and they want to polish the front of it. And then I got a couple of pieces of tanzanite here. I'm just going to find the one that I think is going to be the best suited. I think it's this one right here. And I'm going to facet it for them, which is not something I commonly do. But again, as a favor to a friend, I'm willing to do it. The important thing to do when you're faceting is you need to rinse the pieces each time you facet one grit. So if I move it from this grit to this grit and there's still this grit on top of it, it's not going to polish it well. So you need to rinse the piece every single time before you move it to a new, uh, a new grit. Nice and polished. Okay, well they just needed to facet so it's going to sit in a pendant and at least it's got a nice polished face on it. The machine that I'm using is called the Cab King. It's not really recommended for anything other than small stuff like this uh, because the wheels are rounded. They're going to wind up not being able to give you a flat surface. So if you're trying to polish something a little bit larger than a, an inch, uh, this is not recommended. You need, you, need, you need what's called like a flat wheel. Like, see how this is a flat wheel for grinding? There's machines that have just flat wheels and that's much better for grinding down one inch, one and a half, two inch stuff. Or this is perfect for just you know small tiny stuff like this. 
Very cool. Very cool. Well, a lot of clients are asking me, uh, what do I think the year is going to look like? How do I think the crystal business is going to go? What do I think the next five years, 10 years looks like in the crystal business? I think the first thing that needs to be stated is that most of the mines or the more popular stones that are mined or have been mined for you know decades now in tremendous amounts are dwindling down. A lot of the mines are closing uh, or there's not much material left in the mines or whatever material is left in particular mines, the prices are being doubled, tripled uh, at the source. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very, very hard to buy the small amount of material at triple the cost and then distribute it or wholesale it. What I think we're going to see over the next year is pretty much every go everybody going online. And if you have a retail store or you're an actual store location, I think it's really great because a lot of people are not opening new stores because of what's going on. And so the crystal business is one of those things where people want to see, they want to touch, they want to experience it. So if you have a store and you already have it established, I, I think it's really great just come up with a way that you can sustain that and, and have people coming in safely. And I think you're going to do really, really well with the crystal shop. That being said, anybody who's coming into this new, your best bet is going online, right? So most of my clients who are new are selling live sales or Instagram, Facebook, Etsy, Amazon, eBay, uh, creating their own websites and marketing their own websites. And I think that that's a really great avenue right now, especially because there's such a high demand for crystals. Uh, we're getting around 20 new clients a day contacting us. Actually, we're, we're being very selective now about the new clients that we take on just because we don't have the time to service all of the clients. And we also don't have the material, you know, so my loyalty to my current clients is there first. And once those clients are taken care of, new clients can be dealt with. Or if a new client comes and I'm interested in that client, then we can definitely talk and, and start a new relationship. But What's going to happen over the next five years is you're going to see wholesale distributors like myself turning into domestic wholesalers only, selling to just the retailers. And then you're going to see the secondary wholesalers turning into straight retail. Because right now, what you see a lot on the market is secondary wholesalers who sell retail and wholesale at the same time. So you could go to somebody's location and buy retail. You could also buy wholesale. Where from a wholesale distributor like us, you can't buy retail. We don't sell retail. What's going to happen over the next five to 10 years is that people like me who are sourcing the material there's going to be such little left that we're going to turn probably into retail so to give a big picture or a big overview I think over the next year you're going to see a huge growth in the crystal business it's a great time to get into the business but also don't look at it as a long-term thing I think there's going to be a huge shortage of material over the next five years and people who are you know I guess on the lower end of the business or on the tail end of the business who are kind of smaller dealers who are just kind of doing it on the side those will be the first dealers to kind of go and then you'll see, like I said, your secondary wholesalers becoming retailers and your distributors becoming domestic wholesalers. And then eventually your domestic wholesalers becoming retailers themselves just because there's not enough material to go around. Um, what we have started doing and what I suggest to all my clients is start stashing material, start putting material away, save material. I know it's really hard to wrap your mind around that concept, but you need to save your material. You need to put away your best stuff and save it for that rainy day, especially if this is your bread and butter. So we've been doing that now for the last five years. I've been storing material for five years. You, we get uh, special lots that come in. I take half of it and I put it away. The other half of it goes out and gets sold to clients. So I really highly suggest if there's one thing I can recommend to my clients and to everybody out there for 2021, save material.